sometimes, you know, you've got a vice like this guy. You know, because I generally don't use dogs or dogging systems on the bench top with holes in, um, the, the vices I've got on this particular bench don't have the ability to do that. But you can retrofit yours by recessing the wood, uh, the, um, the vice jaw, and putting in a brass or even a wooden piece that slides into a groove on the back of the vice. So I'm going to show you how I would do that. Um, I've done this on several of the vices because some people do really like let me just clamp this up just for a second because what I'm going to do on here, I'm going to find the center over my vise here, first of all. So I'm going to make a center line. So it's six inches from the edge of my bench is the center of here. So I take this and I make a center line as l along the edge of my bench. As far as I want these to go, I, don't, I may not want them to go very far. I want these dog holes. I can either put dog holes centered on the vise here. I could just put a row of single row of dogs on there and that will hold the workpiece generally. But it's better sometimes if you have a triangle where you have a point here, a point here and a fixed point here, then you have the strength of the triangle which is uh, universally accepted as the, the strongest geometric pattern. So I'm coming down here, I'm going to go two and a half inches off center either side and make a mark here, here, and wherever, however distant I want to go. And then two and a half inches off this line, again, using my finger on this edge as a guide where I cross over here and here. And I'm going to make a line 10 inches from the edge of my vise. Now you can change this and then five inches from there, so 15 from the edge of my vise. You can change these, these sizes to suit you. So I bring this one across here, and this one across here, and I could go on the center line too if I wanted to. I don't want to have too many holes in my bench top. Just my preference, it's up to you. So I've got the position for my holes here. I bore holes through here, and I've got this part of it done, but next, I take my vice jaw out and I've already marked this so here is the center and I'm going just over half an inch on either side of there and that will take this piece of metal here or I could use just a piece of sapelli which is very strong and certainly strong enough to hold uh, any piece that I want to dog on the bench top. I'm going to go quarter of an inch deep here which is just over the thickness of my piece of metal. I'm going to go a little bit less. And then I'm going to square this line across the surface of this plywood. I've got plywood jaws on here. Hang on. I'm going on the wrong side. That would be bad, wouldn't it? So here, across here, and across here. So this takes the full width of that, and you can leave an eighth gap, it doesn't matter. You can put your gap wherever you, to whatever depth you want there. So I'm gonna reposition my depth. I want this piece of metal. So you could just draw around this if you wanted to. Or you could set a gauge, it would be a better way. You could just set a marking gauge to that depth. That would give you a definitive depth just over the thickness of your piece of metal, like that. You do want it to be loose going in there. So I'm just over that thickness of the piece of metal. Run that in between your gauge lines. Underside here, you know, nobody's gonna see under there. So you're going there. Into the vise just take out some of the bulk of that material careful not to go too deep and I'm going all the way through because the vice I use a lot and um, I don't want to uh, 
have that clog up. I want the material to go all the way through. So here, because it's plywood, I'm going directly in here and I'm going to split out that midsection just like that. And I'm using the striations on the plywood to guide me for my depth. So I'm above my overall depth. Then I'm going to set this gradually to take out some of that waste material. I've repositioned my bench so it's not rock solid. So there's my groove. Check it for this. See, I'm still proud here. So now I just turn this a quarter of a turn slacken turn and then go in here go a little bit deeper just keep going across until you get the right depth like that check it again make sure that it's free and clear this one is free and clear so now I can relocate that in its position here on the end of the bench Go flush either side like this. Relocate your screws. That was so fast. So now you have a dogging system on your bench or half a dogging system. There. And now this should drop inside here like this. And you've got your dog. So this, I've got this three quarters of an inch above because most of my material will work for that. I also used a piece of wood at one time before I found the piece of brass and that worked too. So I could use a piece of wood. If I was using wood, I might go a little bit deeper to five sixteenths or something like that. But that's that part of my dogging system. So now all I have to do is drill a few holes in my bench top to facilitate one of these. This is a dog. You can see, I hope, that this is slightly angled in. I'll show you how to make one of these in a few minutes. We're going to bore some holes in here and I'm going to rely on my brace. I'm also going to rely on a simple guide. We used to use this when we did the nosings on staircases because we had a set place that we would set this and I used to make staircases, so we would set this to do the nosings in the stair stringers. And we would set this and run the brace and bit into there. And that would get us exact location for every stair tread. So I'm going here. I'm going to go in here. What I do is I just put the point of my brace on here, like this. Start the brace like this. Get yourself into position. And then you can move this in and you can anchor this with a, with a clamp to keep you right on where you need to be, hopefully. And this will keep you square, really, so you can move this till you can get your clamp in. Just get it tight and then just crunch this right up so it's getting either side of this bit cinch it tight and then just simply pull your brace to that corner and it'll help guide you as you take the first half a dozen turns in here it'll keep you square as you're going down once you've gone in an inch or so you don't have to worry about the uh, the alignment jig and I don't know, if you want to go all the way through, the advantage of that is your shavings will always fall all the way through. But if you want to just go so far, you can do that too. So I'm down the full depth of my snail. What I did on this is I put this spring wire in the back. So when I slide this in, it pinches on that last bit. Take this out. like this. So this slides down here till I'm flush wherever I want it to be 
I slide this in here, and now I just have to drill the remaining holes. I need to make a, another one of these dogs, and I wanted to show you how to make one. They just slot into the hole here, has a spring wire in the back, so when you push this in, it springs on the back. Now I've got a couple of pieces of wire here. This is just two millimeter um, wire. Has a little bit of spring in it, but any wire will do. Piano wire, just about any type of wire will work. A coat hanger works well. I've made them from coat hangers. And I'm using a broom handle here. This is seven eight. So whatever you get your hands on, you could make your own uh, handle. I want these to match, so I'm going here and here. Now watch this, this is very quick. So I'm going to first of all saw across here for my shoulder. So this is just under three quarters of an inch and I'm sawing down just less than, a little bit less than halfway. Then I'm going to saw down the top here. So you could put a line on, which I think will help here. So you can see I'm just off center by about an eighth of an inch. So you work it out for yourself. Now this is important, this. Let me see how I can do this so you can see. I'm gonna do this towards this camera. So I'm gonna go in here on the top here. And I'm gonna angle my saw over this way. So. When I'm sawing down here, instead of sawing perpendicular to the end, I'm going to saw slightly at an angle. So it undercuts a little bit. There, like that. So I'm slightly undercut. If you, if you messed up, that's perfect, that's great. If you didn't cut it, you could always go in like this and chisel it down. Cut it to length. If you're going all the way through the bench, it won't matter how long you make this, but make it long enough. I made mine so it goes almost through the bench. So now I'm going to make a groove across the bottom. So I'm using the stock here. And I'm going to go across here, just off center, like that. And then I'm going to come on the other side of that. And I'm making a recess in here. So I'm taking out that middle bit, just like this. And that will receive my piece of wire freely. Then I'm going to drill a hole with a three millimeter bit right in the middle of here or even off towards the, the back edge here, but in the middle works fine. Drill a recess in there and that's going to take your wire from here and you're going to bend this wire here like this. So now you've got your 90 degree bend for that first bend and we're going to bend it again in a minute. So we're going to make a groove along the length here as well with a saw, with a tenon saw, just like we just did. We're going to follow just parallel to the edge and you can go all the way through and off the top like that. And the same again on the adjacent to it, very adjacent, as close as you can get to it. And now you've got a recess that will take your piece of wire, a nice neat groove. You don't want this tight, so you can see this now fits into the groove and moves freely. So this is going in here like this, and I'm going to clamp this in my vise and use this piece of wood as a bender for my piece of steel. So I bend this into here. Now you can see I've got a little bit of spring in here and I want to keep that bit of spring so that when I put this into the hole further up here, I'm going to make another hole in here, in this piece here, like this. And I'm going to drill all the way through. Now I've got a two mil piece of wire and a three mil drill because I want this to move freely. So any distance up here below the recess that you made 
uh, at the top, drill a hole in here and drill it all the way through. We need a little bit more land here. Like that. in here, into the top, like this, and I'm going to cut this wire off just with a pair of pliers here, but it's easier to make my bend now, so I'm going to put my pliers next to where the hole is, here, I'm going to bend it up here, I'm going to make a bend here, that will probably line up with the hole, and then I'm going to cut this off about five eighths of an inch should be long enough there, chop that off and then bend that into my hole here, as close as I can get it, just to get a start into the hole like that. Now I've got a spring on there, so you can see now this spring in here, so I'm going to squeeze this into the hole till it seats properly like that, and I may have to, like in this case, it's gone pretty tight, so I'm just gonna tap the end of this here, like that, and that will free this up. Now this is springing back and forth in here, and that gives me enough for me to have my dogs in place here and in place here. So you can see, I hope, I turn this to the camera, can you see this? It's protruding slightly back here. So I press that and it closes in. So that gives me a very nice dog and I've got a tabletop here that I may want to scrape. So I got this three point of contact, very solid, very rigid, and a scraper up here, or a plane, and I'm ready to do my tabletop in my dogging system. Really cost me the end of a broom and a piece of wire. So that's a very effective way of dogging your work. If you've got a bigger piece, then just move your dogs along here and you can go all the way along your bench top as you need to and you're on your way to scraping and planing. Great, thank you.